So this is like part three of working on this old 87 Chevy. So far the carburetor, everything's on there. I did put the drive shaft in off camera and I bled the brakes by myself. Hopefully they're good enough. The front ones didn't seem like they're getting a whole lot of fluid, but the back ones seem pretty solid. The next thing to do is since the gas pedal's bolted in here, I'm just gonna pull the throttle cable through here. If you guys can see that up in there, I'm gonna pull the throttle cable out of it so I can cut it off up here. I will have to push it through here because I can't get a hold of it, but push this throttle cable back through there so I can cut this off back there at that bracket and won't cut the line because this sheathing has to come off. Then the little grommet, if I haven't lost it yet. This little guy goes in that little square hole on the bracket, hook all that up and get the carburetor where the throttle linkage works. And I still have to put the radiator in it. Go back around here and try to, hopefully this rod's hanging out. Yep. Yeah. But this little guy, this dad gum line has to come just basically all the way out because I don't want to cut it off. And come back up here and trim this. Let's see. I think it was meant to be a lot longer, but it's the only throttle cable I had laying around. They're like 50 bucks. So I didn't want to buy another one. There we go. It will have to go across like that. And I'll just cut it off right there. Have these really fancy, well, what are they? They're Stanley pliers. They're not really that fancy, but they do seem to work fairly well. I'll turn the camera off real quick, cut that, and come back. I'll turn the camera off, cut that, then come right back. Just, mm. I'll turn, I'll set you guys down, cut that off, then, because I can't do it one hand. Today we're working on the blue truck again. I did put the drive shaft in it earlier this morning. It is the factory drive shaft, so hopefully the slip yoke don't pop out of the back of the transmission, because if you look at it, it's at a heck of an angle, but it is all bolted in there. Next thing to do, is move this radiator so I don't run it over because I'm gonna put it in gear and turn the starter to make sure that the transmission actually works. I know that won't give me a good test just to see if it's gonna pull it forward and not shoot the yoke out of the back of it. So I'll pick this radiator up, put it out of the way because I really don't wanna mess it up because it's a fancy little radiator. It's like 300, well, 200 bucks is all it was. It is an eBay special, but they work out pretty well. Sit it down there, and the other stuff don't really matter. The clutch still works. It stayed bled, so I guess I did get all the air out of it yesterday. Now the brakes, I haven't checked them yet. Hoping they're good. I don't think there's any fuel in the carburetor, so it shouldn't shouldn't try to start, but it may do it. There we go, get up in here, put her in gear, and hit the starter. Yeah, it'll roll. So the clutch does work. Okay, clutch does engage, so we're good there. Next thing to do is hop back out of this lifted monstrosity since the drive shift didn't just fly out of there, I think it's gonna work, at least for a little bit. I gotta make sure the brakes are bled, and that's about it. If you wonder why the truck's set in the fields, cause I got it running and driving, and well, this is where it ran out of gas, and I put probably 10 gallons of gas in this thing, and I drove it from up there to the back of that field once, then over there and back down to that tree, and right here's where it ran out of gas. So I guess we're just gonna wire it in the field, because, I don't have any more gas today and I kind of want to get the tail lights and start trying to finish the wiring on this thing because once I get this done, it'll just be the interior. Then I'll probably put the truck up for sale or I might keep it. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to start wiring this So the up. truck's now out of the field. You can see there's a mess of wires. I'm going to do the front wires in a minute. I figured out the fuel delivery situation. It was just completely out of gas. And then the gas didn't want to go in the tank for some reason, but this truck, I figured out why the front wheels rub on this side, at least the other side doesn't. The front end is about an inch closer on this side, inch and a half than the other side. As you can see, the 
axle's kind of angled because when they bolted it in here, they just kind of bolted it in here and didn't care. But I will fix that. The Phantom grill's right there. I know a lot of people don't like them. I'm going to use it because I don't want to sink a lot more money into this. And we will get to the interior. I know I've been saying that for like two parts now, but it's taken a long time to get the stuff in. Normally jigs is like two day shipping, but they haven't even processed my order yet. So hopefully we'll get that in by Monday and I have a steering wheel and stuff like that coming in. But as of for right now, get a wire the blinkers and stuff so I can bolt that grill on there and get the front end put together and bolt that bumper on there and make it look more like a truck. But there's a mess of wires here. I mean, the people who did this didn't really even care what they were doing. They just wanted to throw it together, I believe. And I'm gonna try to at least make it a halfway decent truck where it's reliable. I did fix the carburetor issue for the most part. There's two throttle return springs on there now. It doesn't run right like that because I guess it keeps too much air out of it, but at least it runs a lot better and it doesn't try to run you over. And the brake booster's kind of iffy. We'll fix that though. So I'm gonna get to putting these wires together and hopefully that won't take long and get that grill. So all the wiring's hooked up now and it's about time to see if I can fit the grill in there. They got some bolts kind of started in the holes. They don't exactly fit how they're supposed to, but the bolt holes in the grill are a lot bigger than the ones in the truck itself. So I kind of had to use a larger bolt where the grill just wiggles all over the place. I think this is, this is the right handle, so let's see. It should go just about like that. This one should go just about in there like that. Well, that's the other day I thought. I thought this was the right one. So the grill's now bolted on there. I know I didn't show that part because, well, it would have been like a 45 minute video segment, but both these, well, actually all three of these bolts are in. I thought it had a lot more, but it didn't. It looks pretty good. It does need a little bit of cleaning and the bumper's not completely bolted on there yet. But the whole front wiring's done. I have stuck it inside of this conduit stuff and it is zip tied on there. I know somebody will say that's wrong in the comments probably. Yes, it is. I will fix that maybe. Then over here, I haven't finished the wiring on this side yet. I will do that. Hopefully, probably do that before I leave tonight. But this could be about it for this part. Next part, we will have the interior finally, I hope, because everything's being delayed on shipping. I did straighten up a lot of the wires in the interior. They were just all thrown all over the place. The blinkers work in the front, but around back, for some reason, they don't work probably something i did wrong or they might not even have bulbs in them i haven't even checked that far yet but the interior i'll be buttoned up next week and we'll probably be done with this and then back on the old 87 square body with the hemi in it only thing on this one i'm black is the headliner parts and these little door jam plates other than that i've been able to order everything it will have a digital dash in it and a bunch of other fancy stuff hopefully y'all like that and i'll kind of show you guys and give you a review on what i think about it and also, if you're thinking about buying one of these radiators off of a eBay, they fit very well. And this thing does take like seven gallons of antifreeze and it's keeping this big block ice cold. Like I've drove it around and it hasn't got over 130, 140. So it's keep, it's doing a good job. It is a four core, probably a little overkill for this, but it was for the Hemi truck and I had it laying around. I will order another one of them for that truck because they work really well. But this is going to be it for this part. See you guys in the next part. Any suggestions you got about what I should do to this truck, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.